For many years, a creature of mystery and wonder has roamed throughout the world. It is a part of religion, culture, and human history like no other. Its territory was once vast, and its numbers were uncountable. Feared, worshipped, and loved by most, its role is now forgotten. Its world is rapidly disappearing, and its time is quickly coming to an end. Maybe a hundred years ago, in Thailand, must have been a, over a hundred, two hundred thousand elephants, at least. Right now, there are only 2,800 something captive elephants. And uh, maybe just 1,200 wild elephants. So altogether, you're talking about 4,000. This is Nong Mai, one of the 4,000 elephants left in Thailand. She is six years old, and she's being taken to the city to work as a street-begging elephant. This is one of their only ways to survive. Thousands of years ago, elephants were used to build civilizations. They were essential in warfare. Thailand defended its freedom and conquered its enemies using elephants. For the past 100 years, the elephant has been used to harvest the forests. Logging helped to build the kingdom's modern day economy, creating jobs and industry. All on the backs of elephants. Unfortunately, this relentless logging devastated the forest habitat. In 1990, logging in Thailand was banned, but the damage was already done, and there was hardly any forest left for elephants to roam freely. Elephants in Thailand became not only homeless, but out of work as well. Times changed, and the elephant became an essential part of a new industry. Roughly 1,500 elephants work in Thailand's tourist trade. Most elephant tourism is very hard on elephants. It requires doing things that are not in their nature. And for many elephants like Nong Mai, they work every night endlessly wandering city streets begging for sugar cane. Sometimes an elephant that has been only with humans and never had any contact with other elephants. They don't know that they're elephants. They think that they're humans because they've only seen humans. Alien in our world and endangered in their own. The Asian elephant is now most certainly a long way from home. But before working for humans, what was the role of the elephant? Perhaps the elephant had a real job, one that had evolved over millions of years. The elephant is truly a super keystone species that helps take care of, you know, wildlife and uh, vegetation, and he is the uh, forester, the living species that takes care of the forest. And the reason that Asia has these lovely, you know, tropical forests is because the elephants worked on them for 20 million years. Most of the forests that once covered Thailand 
forests that played a key role in flood management, climate stability, and biodiversity are gone. As a result, the link between the elephant and the forest has been broken. So now, there are two big problems. But what if you could solve both problems by returning elephants to the forest and make both sustainable once more? It seems quite impossible. Or is it? His Majesty the King of Thailand believed that it was possible. In earlier times, when his royal elephants were taken from the palace to vacation in the forest, he realized they would always return in good health. So in the 1990s, Her Majesty Queen Sirikut of Thailand, responding to the need to restore forest habitat for elephants and other animals, initiated a program to reintroduce elephants back to the wild. This was the first time such a comprehensive plan has ever been attempted. And so, in 2002, the Elephant Reintroduction Foundation was born. Following Her Majesty the Queen's initiative, the Foundation began reintroducing elephants to roam freely in three sanctuaries, totaling over 450,000 acres of protected forest habitat. This was done in collaboration with the Royal Forestry Department, who provided most of the land where the Foundation now operates. In one of the three protected areas in the Sablanka Sanctuary in central Thailand, there are natural boundaries to help contain the elephants within a lush valley. Long ago, elephants roamed these forests before humans settled here and damaged the ecosystem. Then, in 1986, the area was declared a wildlife sanctuary by the government. Since then, the forest has regrown, making it suitable for elephants once again. Today, it's home to 24 reintroduced elephants. But returning captive elephants to the forest is more than just setting them free. To do it right, you need three basic ingredients. Land that has the capacity for enough natural food and water for the elephants in wet and dry seasons. People to watch over the elephants and the forests. People like these field staff. Most of them have grown up with elephants and are former mahouts. That's the name for those who take care of elephants. And of course, elephants. Not every captive elephant can readjust to life without humans. The job of the field staff is to keep track of the elephants, to make sure that they are healthy and adapting to the forest. It's a challenge because despite their size, they're well camouflaged and can move quietly. Following their trails takes weeks of hard work in a very difficult environment for humans. But a paradise for elephants. And when they're back in the forest, it doesn't take them long to remember what to do. Something that we know, for example, Elephants living in cities, this elephant does not know what is proper food for the elephant because they have been with humans too long. Here in this forest, they start to learn. They use their trunks to find the right food. They know the right food to eat. They know what's good. They know when it's too dry, what to do when it rains. They know this because everything is in their memories. If I said, build me a machine that can take care of the forest. What would I get? I would get a steel elephant. Elephants are like the gardeners in the forest ecosystem. The plants and other animals depend on them. 
As they roam through the forest, they spend most of the time eating at least 300 kilos of vegetation and 200 liters of water per day. But their constant eating is not just to satisfy a rather large appetite. There is another purpose, seed dispersal. The nature has a machine that takes care of the forest and it's powered by the thing that it does naturally, which is basically manufacture manure and distributes seeds so that it grows into plants and trees. And when the plants come up, the grass is too tall, the elephant cuts the grass turns the grass into fertilizer. The seeds that elephants eat are processed by digestive enzymes that become well fertilized in the dung when they fall to the forest floor, kilometers away from where the original seed was eaten. Some plants may depend entirely on elephants for seed dispersal. By spreading seeds far and wide, elephants maintain a healthy forest structure. They pull down branches, dig water holes, and create trails. All of this shapes the habitat for the other creatures living here. Without the elephants, the forest diversity would be lost. Since the elephants have been reintroduced here, they have not only maintained the forest, they have improved it. But how do these elephants, who've only known a life in captivity, how do they figure out where to find all the right food to eat in this vast forest? It's in their big brain. If we compare the elephant brain, to the anatomy of the human brain, we will find that both brains are divided in a very similar way. This is a cerebrum. This is the part that is responsible for memory and also is responsible for learning, behaviors, and the emotions. These groups in the elephant brain show us that, well, they indicate very clearly that elephants have very good memories and are able to learn and are very intelligent. This massive and developed brain could explain why elephants in the wild live in closely knit families and have many ways of expressing emotions and communicating with each other. But elephants in captivity seem to form different relationships with each other, ones that are not linked by family, but by experience. Tawan is a young bull who has been donated to the foundation. He is going where few elephants have gone before. He has no experience in this new world, but perhaps a distant memory stirs inside his massive brain. Imagine what it might be like for an elephant to be freed from a captive environment and return to a forest where instincts that have been dulled can be awakened once more. This young bull will now have his chance. He's a good, good chip. During his first week in the forest, he is kept under close observation. He adjusts to the new sights and smells, and plants to eat. The veterinarian team do a thorough checkup to make sure he is in good health before he meets other elephants. This is the first step for all the elephants brought here. Samples are collected for hormonal and DNA analysis, and the elephants are ID'd with microchips. The information is compiled into a DNA database with a profile for each elephant. This is part of a bigger plan to map the genetic diversity of elephants in Thailand to help protect them. 
These elephants are healthy and ready to be set free. But not all captive elephants are so lucky. Fortunately, the fate for one is about to change. Remember Nong Mai, the street begging elephant? Well, today, she is not going to work. The foundation has purchased Nong Mai from her owners, who can no longer look after her. Today, she is traveling to Sablanka to begin a new life in the forest with other elephants. I think it was last year, I remember. It was probably less than one or two weeks. I think two weeks when Nong Mai arrived. She was carefully put close to Pom Pam, and the staff noted Pom Pam's behavior. Did she like little elephants? The staff noted that she didn't attack the little one. They actually liked each other and could be around each other. Pom Pam is a mature tourist elephant who was brought to the sanctuary a few weeks before Nong Mai. Nong Mai wasted no time and bonded with Pom Pam, as if she found her long-lost friend. The behavior of Nong Mai is like a wild elephant now, because she's not street walking and selling sugarcane anymore. The two are now inseparable. Pom Pam is protective of Nong Mai and acts like her mother. They are learning from each other as they adjust to their new life of freedom. Setting an elephant free is the highest form of making merit in Thai culture. It is done in honor of their majesties, the king and queen of Thailand. The Thai believe that making merit brings success and spiritual happiness in this life and the next. The foundation receives donations from supporters for the purchases and care of the elephants. Most people don't believe that a captive elephant can change. Nobody believes it. We are here and we know it's true. We have seen them adapt and change. You have to see it for yourself, like we do how they can survive naturally and happily in the wild. Now free from a captive life where everything is controlled by humans, these elephants can start to make their own choices. They can choose which plants to eat, where to go, and who to socialize with. They put on weight. They are healthier and happier, and they learn to live together even though they're not related. Unlike the tourist camps where many of them come from, this place is different. There are no tourists. With very little human interaction, these elephants develop social groups and bond with each other. Just like wild elephants. These bonds in life extend into death as well. When an elephant dies at the sanctuary, it is customary for monks to pray for the spirit of the elephant. Other elephants are brought to the ceremony to pay their respects to their deceased companion. This is the same behavior seen in wild elephants. Long memories, Long relationships and ritual around death suggest that elephants are a lot like us. And also like us, 
Elephants suffer when they experience tragedy in their lives. A sea suckhorn is probably the wildest, meanest wild elephant in Thailand. Sisa Korn was a baby elephant. He, he must have been about uh, probably a year or two years old when he was found. Apparently, the poacher uh, shot his mother, which is the standard practice, is to shoot the mother so you can uh, steal the baby. After his mother was shot, Sisa Korn got very angry and charged the poacher. As he charged the poacher, he was shot. When uh, the elephant was found, the, the baby elephant was found in Naratiwat. Uh, Her Majesty the, the Queen uh, learned about it and uh, asked that the elephant hospital uh, take care of this uh, baby elephant. He was shot all over his body and we found 35 bullets, 35 in his body. Uh, our vet team surgically removed most of the bullets but not all of them. He was very unsure of himself and always on guard when there were human beings around because of his experience. I mean, his mother was shot, he was shot, and his friend was shot in front of him. So he's very afraid of human beings. Anyway, that was... Uh, about six years ago. And slowly he has been de-traumatized so that uh, people can approach him uh, from a distance still, uh, but he's, he's been more trustworthy of human beings. It took over six years for the field staff to gain his trust. Every day he gets better. His story is one of many where elephants suffer because of humans. We have much to learn about the emotional behavior of elephants, but we do know that they have awareness and empathy that is very human-like. Their long memories help them survive, and maybe that's why elephants never forget. But what happens to an elephant who may want to forget? Elephants have. They have always helped to save our country, but nobody has been serious about letting them live comfortably, even though they have helped us so much for such a long time, since our ancestors' time. So before elephants become extinct, I'd like to tell all the people who like to help elephants in all the different ways. If we look at it the way it was, we should now try to bring them back to nature. This is something that will be the very best thing for all of them. ทุกชั่วโมงนั้นจะมีสิ่งที่ดับศูนย์ศูนย์หายไปจากพื้นโลกลงไปมีการที่ห่วงลูกโซ่ของเอ่อความหลากหลายทางชีวภาพนั้น
bringing animals back to the wild. It's what we hope. After 10 years of returning elephants to the forest, hope and success comes early one morning. Jarini, formerly a tourist elephant, has given birth to a little female at 3 a.m. on April 17, 2012. She is the first baby born in the Sablanca forest to reintroduced elephants who have naturally mated in the wild. Baby elephants develop in their mother's womb for 22 months, the longest pregnancy of any animal. Her brain is already fully developed when she comes into the world, and in the first few hours, she has the skills to figure out what she needs to do to survive. With some help from mom, she'll learn how to use her truck. Like humans, learning from elders is a significant part of a young elephant's life. Soon she'll be big enough to explore the forest with the other elephants. She could be the first of a next generation of elephants that may have the distant memory of a life with humans, but the chance to naturally reproduce and resume their real job in the forest ecosystem. But only if there are others that can follow. And only if there are any forests left. Wild Asian elephant populations are decreasing every day due to loss of their habitat. In captivity, more elephants die than are born. Although elephants may live over 60 years, they do not reproduce quickly or easily. In Thailand, the elephant population is decreasing by 3.5% per year. At this rate, they could be extinct from Thailand in 30 years. By just uh, buying captive elephants and reintroducing them into the natural habitat is only 50% of our work. The other 50% is to have them successfully reproduce so that the number of births equal at least the number of elephant deaths per year. And only when uh, that can be done, we can say we are saving the elephant from extinction. The mission of the Elephant Reintroduction Foundation is critical. It gives us the chance to repair one of nature's essential links and replenish a vital ecosystem, not just for Thailand, but for the rest of the world too. By returning elephants to the forest, it not only protects the elephants, it protects the forest and the interdependence of all living things. For without the forests, there can be no elephants. And without the elephants, just what kind of world would it be?